Where is everybody? What's going on? Is, is there a show? There's a show, right, George? I think so. I'm pretty sure we're live. I'm pretty sure we're on it right now. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's the whole point. I think that's. Uh, I think that's what's going on. But um, so welcome everyone. It is Thursday at three o'clock Eastern time, and this is your live at Epifan. Yeah. And today we are going to be covering, I think, uh, a topic that it looks like in chat already people are pretty uh, interested to hear about. And we're going to be talking about uh, working from home and all the various things you might need to take into consideration uh, along those lines. Um, and uh, as some people, Rudy had already mentioned in chat and a few other people mentioned in chat, uh, that, uh, you know, this is a hot topic right now and uh, some people might need to get some some tips so we have some yeah it's obviously very pertinent right now we're seeing a lot of places uh either with existing work from home policies or they're rolling out work from home right now just because of the situation happening around the world right now and this might sound a bit cynical but it's never been easier to really roll this kind of process out uh, just because of how far video conferencing technology has come and i mean this is a great time to discuss some of the options to really elevate your work from home setup. Yeah, and uh, so we're going to be covering each of those in uh, in a few different scenarios. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, throw your questions into chat. Uh, we'll come back around to those, and uh, we do see some of our usual viewers: Faithful Mess, Tim Trot, uh, and so on. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, let's start with maybe the first question: Is is you know? Ob aside from the obvious in the current, uh, in the news, uh, but why work from home, aside from obviously when you're told to by the boss? I mean, sometimes you might have a dentist appointment or an optometrist appointment closer to your home than to your office. It's, it's a lot easier for you to just pop out there really quick, get back to work without any sort of delay in your day. Uh, maybe you have a, a kid at home who's sick and you just sort of need someone there to keep an eye out. Or, I mean, there are a lot of workplaces that have really encouraged teleworking, work from home solutions. Obviously, the big ones like Facebook and Salesforce, but even smaller companies have have really robust work from home policies, including Epifan. So, exactly, and and we should point out that you know we're we're kind of experimenting with this actually right now for this show, and we might go into more detail that later. But when this came up as a topic, we decided to challenge ourselves and uh and try it even for the live show uh so hopefully everything is running smoothly and so far it looks like it is um i guess some of the pros of working from home are obviously the zero commute um you know it, I'm not saying i recommend this but you could roll out of bed and stumble down the hall to you know whatever space you're calling your office and you're at work uh you know that's it um gives you a lot more flexibility maybe in the hours or if you're someone who has kids like you mentioned or, or appointments or anything like that. Um, and, you know, another probably a big positive, and we kind of saw this in the news with the manufacturing slowdown in China, um, is that it's good for the planet. Um, it's, it reduces your carbon footprint. And, um, you know, in, in the long run, maybe that's uh, a path forward more and more people should be considering um, because, you know, we're less cars on the road, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, really big picture, uh, big picture options. But um, exactly, and and as our colleague Lisa mentioned the other day, you get to wear your comfier clothes. Maybe um, you know you can kind of be more relaxed uh, in your own home environment. Uh, it's not all upside, though, of course, because there are, there are some difficulties that you need to work around before you can get a really smooth work from home setup. Uh, obviously, if you have a lot of, if you're one of those businesses that is in some sort of work, enforced work from home policy right now, it can be sometimes difficult to communicate with your team quickly and efficiently. Even if you're all on the same Slack or Zoom chat, you might run into issues where somebody's away from their keyboard for a little bit or, or something like that when you just need an answer right away. And of course, if you live with other people, uh, be it, you know, family, roommates, pets, what have you you might run into situations where maybe they've got the music on too loud. Maybe they're constantly just walking in through the room while you're in the middle of a really important uh, video call. 
And those are some things that you are going to need to really consider if you're going to, you know, take your home video conferencing really seriously. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of things around there um, that, you know, some people think that working from home is also really easy, but it, it also takes a lot of discipline um, and making sure that you have, you know, dedicated space, no distractions um, and, and actually stick to a routine because it changes your normal, you know, office routine completely. Um, and, you know, that, that's a big challenge that until people find themselves in it day after day, don't realize how hard it truly is. Um, and, and that, that requires quite a bit of effort and, and like I said, discipline, um, you know, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Not everyone can adapt to that as easily as others. I think that's why we saw a big rise in co-working spaces recently, because a lot of people were working from home and realized, you know what, I actually like having a dedicated physical space that sort of puts me in the mindset of, okay, I'm going to be working from now on. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's easier to put the bookends on it when there's a physical space related to it. And all right, well, let's just jump into it today. We're going to be talking sure. about three different sort of levels of setup for how you can do video calls at home. So this is some really basic stuff. Uh, if you're working from home, you're going to have to keep going to your meetings, keep making your sales calls, keep talking to your yeah. business partners and stuff like that. And you can really make it a seamless experience, uh, experience that makes it look just as professional as if you were in, you know, the high rise office or what have you. And with some preparation, you can really get a really professional image broadcast out to the world. So George, let's jump into example one. Yeah, well, example one is uh, actually <laughs> your example right now. And that's the acceptable level in a pinch, um, you know, where you basically grab your laptop, you sit down in a room, you flip the lid open, you turn it on and you go. Um, you know, there's definitely some considerations even within that very run and gun style that you want to make sure of. Lighting is a big uh, thing you want to pay attention to. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the camera and positioning and, and the microphone you plan on using and your background. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit about your particular situation right now, which to be fair, we've known for a while you're going to, you know, change this, but <laughs> yeah. uh, we left it this way for the show. <laughs> yes. Thank you for raising that. Uh, so it doesn't seem like I don't know how to set up a video, but uh, I've got this in my, uh, my spare room at home, which is set up as an office. So I've got a big window in front of me so I can at least get the light in correctly. Uh, and I literally have just popped the laptop open on the desk and I'm using the native webcam in the, uh, in the laptop and the native audio from the laptop as well. So that, this is sort of the quality you can expect from that. And one of the considerations you have to put in is you might be getting some weird angles depending on how you end up laying it out. Because of course I've got uh, this, this Dell laptop where instead of the webcam being sort of top and center, it's at the bottom left. So if I was to start typing or something, you might start seeing my fingers, anything like that. So that could become a consideration in any kind of call you might be doing or anything like that. And of course, I'm kind of fortunate that this is my spare room because, I mean, there's a shelf in the background, but there's not a lot going on. Um, so it doesn't look too, too distracting. But uh, obviously, in some situations, you might want to pop it up in the kitchen or something like that. And of course, that might, may present some some more complications in terms of either just sound or lighting or, as I just mentioned, set deck in the background. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because that laptop, that Dell laptop that you have, has some pros and cons. Its microphone that's built in is actually, for a built-in laptop microphone, is actually exceptional. Um, and it's, it's way of noise isolating between the speakers and the microphone are very good. Um, and the camera quality is actually very good, but the positioning of the camera is maybe one of the worst on a laptop I think I've ever seen. Um, yeah. but that being said, any laptop, even when it has it in, at the top of the screen, just because of the way we tend to position laptops means that you're always going to get this strange, you know, up the nose angle. Um, that is not flattering. It's not ideal. Um, and it just, it doesn't look great. It doesn't present a good feeling. It'll definitely do in a pinch. Uh, and I definitely think for internal communications uh, between staff members, it's totally fine. Um, when you and I chat this way, it, 
it's totally fine. It doesn't matter because the visual representation between the two of us doesn't matter that much. However, if you're talking about making external video calls, hosting clients, doing business that way, maybe you're, it's sales, something along those lines, you probably want to step it up a notch. You probably want to do a little extra uh, and move in, into something more and maybe even invest a little bit in some of the gear. Um, so why don't you tell us about what that next tier looks like? Well, I mean, that next tier is exactly what you've got going on in your home office right there, eh, hey, hey, George? Yeah. Uh, so you've got, well, I mean, do you want to pull back the curtain? Because I mean... Yeah, I can hear a little bit. Um, I'll try to just do it here. Look, I mean, really quickly. <laughs> like you're in the studio. But, uh, yeah, it may look like I'm in the studio, but I am in fact not. I am sitting in front of actually a very poorly put together uh, green screen. Um, but luckily, through applications like Zoom, uh, if you have a green screen, which you can get with a very small investment, you can play around with virtual backgrounds. Um, and they can be virtual backgrounds of your own creations, your own pictures, um, or whatever you want it to look like. And in my case, using a shot of our studio uh, to pretend like I'm in there um, means that I, it, you know, you don't see whatever the backdrop is uh, behind me in my home office, which is not as tidy as yours. <laughs> and so, you know, but if I was having a, a call with a customer, they would never know. Uh, of course, lighting plays a role whenever you get into green screens. Um, but you can also get very inexpensive lighting as well, which I did do. Um, one is on right now to just give a little more light on this side of my face because I have a window to this side. And so I'm getting natural light this way, but it meant this side was very dark. So a little bit of lighting here helped. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I can see George complaining about ironing the green screen, I literally spent about five minutes setting this up and this is what I was able to achieve. So this is a small amount of investment and minimal effort to set it up. And there you go. Um, I see Tim Trot in the chat mentioned, you know, this is why Logitech cameras were invented and you yourself are using uh, Logitech for the setup, aren't you? I am. I'm using the C920, aka the world's most popular webcam. Um, and the beauty of the C920 is it's inexpensive. Um, you can get it on sale oftentimes for very little. Um, it has a decent amount of control in terms of white balance control, digital zoom, color saturation, brightness contrast, those things, which I have tweaked a little bit on mine uh, to improve the look of things as well. Uh, so, so those things are definitely, you know, uh, advantage to having a better webcam where many of the generic ones that are built into the laptops, aside from Macs, uh, <laughs> you know, really don't give you a lot of that. You just get what you get. The image is usually really grainy and noisy. Um, it just, they're not, they're not great. So having a dedicated webcam is definitely a step up from that and getting a good quality one like a C920 or C922 um, are a good thing. It also really lets you control the angle, right? Because yes. of course you can you can set up where where you want it to be and shoot what you want. So maybe if you're a teacher doing a lecture at home, you can set up a whiteboard in the background and get a nice medium shot that really looks like the classroom experience. But uh, tell tell us a bit more about your space because there's there's some other stuff going on, of course, right? Yeah. So of course my webcam is on top of my monitor. So instead of getting an up the nose look, it's looking down at me ever so slightly. The camera's probably just above my eye level or pretty much at my eye level with me sitting at the desk, which means that even if I'm looking at things on the screen, like I'm looking at the chat right now, it's not super distracting or obvious that my eyes are not at the camera. Um, you can see it a little bit, but, but not nearly as bad as some situations. And it's very easy for me to glance up to the camera uh, and, and keep my eyes focused there uh, to feel that better connection with, with whoever is on the call with me. Um, I do keep looking down at my paper sheet though, which is <laughs> a separate thing. Um, the other thing of course that we both have here is a minimal distraction. Um, 
although I am using one of these rules and you're breaking one of these rules, uh, but having a dedicated space, a home office, if you're gonna be doing this long-term is very important. If you try and do it on the kitchen counter or on your couch in the living room, it's just not gonna work. Not only does it not look professional, but there's gonna be distractions like we mentioned before, whether it's pets, kids, spouses, whatever. Um, but one good rule of thumb is typically to make sure that there are no doors yeah. in the frame of your camera shot. Because if someone were to open that door, even if they don't say anything or make any noise, the, the visual of the door opening, or at worst, they make a ton of noise, uh, is extremely distracting. If it's off to the side where, where mine is, you know, complete opposite end of the room off to my right, if someone were to open that door right now, um, the people I'm talking to would never know. Uh, they would have no idea. And it's more likely the person walking in would see that I'm doing something because they're, they're coming in from the side back and they would know to be quiet. Um, so that's an important tip. And of course, there's that sort of infamous example of that, uh, that South Korea expert on BBC who's kid and yeah. wife and then other kid just sort of barged. Exactly, or, exactly. That's the best example of the what not to do. <laughs> right. um, the audio quality is also something you're really going to have to consider because yeah. even if you've got great quality video, if they can't understand what you're saying, that video call is useless. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we mentioned that I would say your laptop using the built-in microphone is actually an exception. Uh, to the rule because most built-in microphones on 99% of the laptops that I've encountered, and I trust me, I run into this every single day with customers, other staff, just people all over the place. Most built-in microphones are trash. They're horrible. So I would strongly recommend not using one uh, whenever possible. Um, so the alternative is look at a good quality headset which gives you a lot of options. It gives you noise isolation around you um, because again, minimize distraction. If it has a boom mic on it, it means you can usually get pretty good quality. Although if you cheap out on this, it will also be pretty bad. So you wanna spend a reasonable amount of money on a good headset to do it that way. The other option, which is what I'm doing right now, is using a dedicated uh, microphone. And so in this case, I'm using um, a Yeti Blue Nano, their mini version of the, of the Blue Yeti. Um, there's obviously the bigger one that's extremely popular. Um, so those are, are definite good positive options. And what I've done is I just have it on a arm that's attached to my desk so that I can move it in and out. And you can just see, maybe not even in the stream, but just at the bottom edge of my shot, you can just barely see the pop filter that I have in front of it as well. Um, and this, again, a pop filter, very inexpensive upgrade to a, to a microphone, just, to, just in case. Um, you got the audio a lot. Exactly, and, and honestly, right now, I'm sitting a good 14 inches from the microphone. Um, and so that, again, just gives me breathing room, gives me more space, I could sit back a bit more and I'm not sacrificing the quality of the audio tremendously. Um, I will say I have done no sound treatment to the room though. There is no sound deadening in this room whatsoever. Adding the green screen probably cut it down a little bit, but aside from that, this is my home office I normally don't use for work, so it is just decorated with random nerd things, not sound blankets or anything like that. Um, and they're all the things that are in here are not particularly uh, good at absorbing noise. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I'm using the green screen, but honestly, if you get a stand like what this green screen is being held on, you don't have to use a green screen. You could also just get a printed background. Um, typically, they're about $20 Canadian, and it could be white bricks or something like that instead. So there's a lot of options to do an artificial background or to just dress up intentionally the background behind us, which I know you were looking at maybe doing. Absolutely. All in, how much time did it take for you to get the results that you're, that we're seeing on the screen right now? Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, ordered it on Amazon prime, got it the next day. Um, 
total investment under $150 Canadian. So that's like 20 bucks American. Um, and yeah, I, I'm fine. Like probably the largest amount of time spent was putting together the poles for the, for the frame that holds the green screen. The rest of it was like five minutes. It very, very quick. Um, and you know, we are using zoom right now. Um, and that's how I'm putting in the artificial backdrop. Zoom's chroma keying that they're doing is actually incredibly forgiving. Um, and so you don't necessarily have to go overboard with lighting the green screen the way you might in a studio. Right. You've only got the one LED on right now, actually, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's let's peel back the curtain even more, because if you sure. really need to get the best quality view, the best quality image capture for your video conferencing technology, I mean, we happen to make some excellent capture cards and some of them are being used right now. Uh, if we could switch over to see our producer, Cameron, who's in his own home office, he's doing switching remotely. Hello. <laughs> hey guys, how's it hey, going? Good. Your uh, respective cities in the Ottawa area. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Cameron, tell us a bit about what kind of layout you got going on. So um, as some of our viewers know, obviously we make a few different solutions for hardware encoding. And one of those is the AVIO 4K. And so with the AVIO 4K, it offers a USB 3 interface on one end and a USB interface on the other. And I'm actually bringing in a USB signal from a uh, Sony A6300, just paired with a 50 mil, a 50 mil lens, as well as just one spotlight that I've got bouncing off of the, the roof in my office here to give as nice kind of soft a light as possible. And really this setup, although it includes a couple of pieces of kit that can be a little bit pricey, you can pay a lot of money for a DSLR. Uh, the 6300, for example, you can grab one of those for like $1,200 for the body, a few hundred dollars for the lens, but it really gives you that pro look and I mean we could even use this setup for creating like vlogger videos or instructional videos like this is a pretty a pretty easy setup and running it directly into the computer uh, obviously I could bring it right into QuickTime if I had a, a microphone on the camera do edits on that video really quickly but uh, just to get back to the setup itself I do have a, a Rode USB mic and everything is running through Zoom so Zoom is handling all of our video and putting us together in this chat room. And then in the chat room itself, we're pulling all of those individual sources out. Yeah. And to be fair, one of the big things that we mentioned, you know, in, or we need to mention in terms of consideration, and Linda was mentioning that Cameron's a bit choppy. I noticed that too, uh, just for a second there. Um, and we've seen this over a few tests like this. Um, to be fair, Cameron lives on an island in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so he doesn't have the best uh, internet. And that's a big consideration when you're looking at working from home. You need to have decent internet if you're planning on doing things with a lot of video. Because just like live streaming or anything else, even through applications like Zoom or WebEx or whatever you want to use, you know, you need to have decent internet uh, in order to do that. And just like live streaming, probably one of the biggest considerations is upstream bandwidth. You know, if you're doing video from your location, excuse me, if you don't have good upstream, it's going, it's going nowhere. And you, people will notice because the video will get choppy. You might see some artifacting. You might have audio drop out. And this is something obviously, yeah, you really need to, you really need to, take into consideration when you work on this setup. You also need to try and figure out what kind of conferencing software you want to be yeah. using. I mean, I know a lot of companies use Slack. Um, we're using Zoom for this, of course. Um, yeah. But I mean, there's there's a wide array of options out there and you, you are going to have to do a bit of research, do a bit of reading yourself, figure out what really best suits the needs that your your organization is is putting forward. Yeah, I mean, well, we've, hash, we've had hashtag. a lot of experience with different uh, chat aggregates like this one with Skype and even using iMessage to bring in yeah. guests onto the show. Uh, I would say in general, Zoom has actually been able to handle it really well. Yeah. Um, just back to the bandwidth, I did a really quick speed test. You might have noticed I got even more choppy when that was running, <laughs> but uh, I'm only pulling down 13 right now and I'm actually putting up about four to five megs so 14 down and, and five up but considering that i'm also running all of the 
all of the traffic through a VPN, which is on our secured server in order to access our studio in Ottawa, as well as the additional capacity for running the- um, It's actually doing very well. Different things. I'm actually yeah. doing not, not too bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, hashtag not sponsored. We are using Zoom. We are talking about Zoom quite a bit. Um, it's definitely extremely popular these days. Um, but, you know, by no means are, is that the only option. Um, you know, WebEx has been around for a long time. I personally would say that in my experience, um, and people's mileage may vary, but the video quality that you get out of Zoom compared to WebEx uh, is Zoom is superior. Um, I personally have found the, the Google chat stuff okay as well. Um, Skype, I find, is pretty bad. Um, so again, you just have to choose what you're looking for. Um, certainly the main reason we're using Zoom, just so everyone is aware, is that that was deployed company-wide for Epifan. Um, and so it's, it, it's the cornerstone of, of basically all of our communications at this point. Um, and so, you know, it's, it, you know, that's, that's why we're going to use it. it. It's not anything besides that that's the tool that we have, uh, to use for these things. But a big plus to this is that if you buy the right license with Zoom, you can also do webinars um, through Zoom and just that adds some extra tools beyond a basic meeting if you need to do a really large audience. So it can be a great choice for that. Um, I guess some of the other things we need to consider, of course, though, not just the physical presentation of your room, but also um, the fact that you want to still look presentable. You don't want to show up on camera uh, in your pajamas. Um, you know, that's doesn't matter where you are, whether it's your home or the office or in the grocery store, that's just never appropriate. And, you know, just keeping that in mind, uh, if you show up with messy bedhead and, and your pajamas on, it, you're not going to, not going to impress anybody. Um, and you're so you still don't putting your face forward out there in the world for people to see. And especially and, if you're representing your company. Exactly. And you want that to be the best face possible. I want to go back a bit though, and maybe we could go into a bit more detail with how we're actually doing the show entirely remotely. I'm out in East Ottawa. Cameron's on an island somewhere. George is apparently also <laughs> on an island now. Um, I'm sitting by the lake, also known as the yeah, West George End of Ottawa. The lake again. <laughs> yeah. So um, obviously we wouldn't be able to bring you today's show if it wasn't for the technology that Epifan actually makes. So we're using the Pearl 2 like we do every week for the show. And that Pearl 2 is physically located in our studio in our Ottawa office, which is in Canada. So that's a part of the greater Ottawa area. And um, I'm not only accessing the Pearl and some local hardware in that studio using a VPN, but I'm also using AV Studio which is a product that, uh, or an online service that Epifan offers where we can access that per re remotely and not have to use a VPN. So basically what we did was I set up a laptop in the studio in our office and that laptop is connected uh, via hard lines. So HDMI right into the Pearl 2. That's bringing over the video signal that we see here. So we're mixing those into the layouts as well as the titling software, which is being run locally. I didn't try running that over VPN on um, NDI on VPN. I don't think that would handle it too, no. <laughs> too well, but uh, it is running locally in the, in the studio. And then of course I'm doing all the switching and the controlling of the production just from my house here from my home office. And again, all that traffic is running from our Pearl 2 where we have a much more stable and high bandwidth connection that we can do both Facebook um, YouTube and Twitch simultaneously, I would not be able to handle that kind of bandwidth. <laughs> no, here at the no. House. with your current upload speed, you couldn't even do one of those at full HD, let alone two or three. Um, and, and again, that's the main reason we're doing it the way we are. Um, we did look at a few services, and this might be something we touch on in a future show, um, cloud-based services that would aggregate multiple streams into one and then redistributing them out to multi-points again. Um, I didn't find one that I was particularly happy with, uh, and the cost, um, was a lot <laughs> in terms of a paid CDN that offers multi encoders, funneling and, and so on. Um, so, you know, that, that could be a possibility more in the future. 
at the moment, uh, one of the best ways to do it is, is like we're doing now um, by using a hardware encoder like the Perl, um, taking a feed out of your video conferencing system. This could even be a hardware video conferencing codec like you see in many boardrooms, um, just taking the feed out of there into a Perl, streaming and recording to however many destinations you need. Um, and then you can do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, and uh, yeah, that makes it very easy. And it also means it doesn't matter what conferencing software you choose to use. Yeah. It, you could use an entirely free one and still accomplish exactly the same thing. So, I mean, I think that sort of covers it in terms of stuff that you can do to really elevate the way you work from home, elevate your video conferencing, your video calls, either internally or externally. And as we saw, like even with little small touches, you can get a really, a huge world of difference. Like George, I think you, I recall you said it took like what, maybe 15 minutes to get the whole thing set up from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it probably took more time trying to find the parts I wanted on Amazon than it did to actually put them together. So obviously this situation that a lot of businesses and a lot of organizations and a lot of people around the world are facing, it's not gonna go away anytime soon. So we're gonna continue to keep talking about solutions for remote working video conferencing, remote classrooms, that kind of thing in the coming weeks. So everyone that's watching, thank you so much for coming out. And we hope that you'll, I mean, you'll, we hope you'll come back again next Thursday at three. So, cause we've got a lot more to get through on this. Exactly. Exactly. And I really appreciate Faithfulness's comment there uh, earlier. Business uh, from the chest up, pajama party from the waist down. Uh, that, uh, yeah, too much information, too much information for me. Well, wasn't, wasn't it uh, Tom Brokaw or um, CBC's uh, head, head anchor and he would just wear shorts? Yeah. Right. I mean, so he just not? had a, a dress shirt and then they went and then they put in like a standing desk and he's like, oh, great. <laughs> now I got to wear pants on the national every night. This is Why a, did we have to get ideal. a long shot? What is this? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, anyway, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, sub hit that subscribe button, follow us on Twitter, and we will continue to push out more content about telemarketing, working from home, conferencing from home uh, to address the needs that we know a lot of people are facing right now. Exactly. We're only at the beginning and we got a lot more planned. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. There's a tremendous value in us holding this conference every year. It allows our best and brightest to get together, to share best practices, and really learn who we're behind the expertise at our firm. I've been to five engineering conferences. I've been to, this is my second MTC conference. Every time I, I come away from the conference, I, I come away smarter, uh, a little bit more, um, have, have a lot more ideas to bring back to my team. And, and, and I, I love to share them, love to share the culture. At the Supplier Showcase, we'll have our top preferred suppliers coming in. It'll be a good chance for everyone in the organization to walk around and meet face to face. I'm really excited about the Supplier Showcase, get a chance to meet the vendors that we have current relationships with, uh, understand how we can leverage those relationships and uh, take them back to benefit our clients and my IFM team. Supply chain over the last few years has seen tremendous growth. And so now this is our opportunity to welcome new members, uh, introduce them to their teammates, uh, provide training, provide uh, a fellowship, if you will, and then that allows us to act as a strong organization going forward. For me, it's about the courses and the classes and the learning and, and soaking up the knowledge that's out there for me to understand it and to learn things that I don't necessarily touch day in and day out. So there's a lot of exciting classes this year that I'm excited to be a part of and partake in. Each course offers something a little bit different and hopefully takes something back from each course, whether it's uh, tenant relationship management, energy sustainability, or it has to do with best practices, accounting. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity here to learn. For me, it's so much about the personal contact, you know? It's so much about um, understanding that who else at the firm can help you. 
because I think that that's the power of Jones Lang LaSalle is when we put our minds together and we collaborate. One of the things I love most about the conference is to see the connections and to be a part of making the connections across regions and across business lines both from IFM to MPM. When you're at the conference and everybody's together, you're walking around, you'll see the name tag. Oh, I've talked to that person several times. I need to go over and introduce myself. And again, that's where the casual conversations start to develop and then you get the best practices start evolving from those types of conversations. I think a lot of it for me is being able to share the breadth of JLL with my client and, the, and my team. So going back to my team and showing them it's not just about our account, it's about a broader community at the, at the firm and being able to take that back to them, finding ways to help them get integrated with the firm um, and integrated with the broader JLL family. I would view everything through the telescope of client obsession because everything we're touching and doing ultimately leads to delivering for the clients. So if you keep that in mind and try to translate that, each and everything you touch and do here at the conference, I think we'll all be better for it. Put your Blackberries, your iPhones down for three days and really focus on the conference material, getting to know your peers and your partners, getting to know some of the senior management that are here. This is again a once in a year opportunity for you to really focus on your own career, focus on what Jones Lang LaSalle is looking to do in the future and, and really understand um, how you fit in. Take advantage of all the opportunities of meeting all the brain cells in this building. Uh, fabulous, fabulous opportunities to uh, integrate, to uh, partner, leverage relationships, um, capitalize on every second that you're here. It's, it's an awesome, awesome conference. We are a firm of innovation, so we're a firm that continues to push the limits and test boundaries. So every time I come here and I see new things and exciting things that either the firm is doing or other accounts are doing or our, our peers on the market side are doing, I'm really excited to partner with them. It's amazing. This company is extremely large and Everyone is very similar in what their, what their number one goal is, and uh, that's really to be a part of something bigger and to really um, make it better every day. The ability to have this group together, connected, and be able to really focus on learning, not worried about the calls that you're missing uh, back at the office or back at the property, because everyone's in this together, in this training as a team together, so there's sort of a hall pass this week. So take advantage of it, enjoy it, learn from it, and leave here better than you were when you came. Here is an example of an online meeting with two teams who want to discuss a new project to build a convention center on a piece of land owned by a municipality. The members of team number one, the real estate developer, are Alexander, in Brazil, connected with APC, Tom in India, connected with a Mac, and Matt in the United States, connected with a Mac. The members of team number two, the municipality, are Christina in the United States with APC, Iran in India with APC, Rachel in the United States with APC, and Vicky in France with an iPhone. And I, Giuseppe, I'm the host of that meeting. I am in the United States and I'm connected with a Mac. First, I'm going to have a private meeting with the team leader of the municipality. Hi, Christina. Uh, thank you for participating in our online meeting. Uh, you, you represent the team of the uh, municipality, right? So you own the piece of land uh, where there is an abandoned airport now. Is that correct? Okay, now, uh, I, I want, just wanted to double check with you that uh, you and your team are ready to discuss this project today. Yes, we are. You're ready? Okay. So le let me bring uh, Alexander in, okay? Hi, Alexander. Can you? Hi, uh, Alexander, you are the team leader of the real estate developer, is that correct? That's correct. And you, you already know Christina because you met in the past. Hi, Christina, how are you? Okay, uh, Alexander, I, I wanted to uh, uh, check with you that uh, your team is ready to discuss our project today. 
Yes, we are ready. You're ready, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring everybody back, okay? Because now they are on hold. And uh, then we'll take it from there. Alexander, uh, if you want, you can mute yourself. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. So let me bring everybody back. Okay, so welcome uh, everybody. And you know that uh, each of you uh, belongs to a different uh, uh, team. So Christina, Iran, Rachel, and Vicky are part of the team of the municipality that owns a piece of land. And Alexander, Tom, and Matt are part of the team of a real estate developer who would like to build uh, something on, on that piece of land, okay. Now, just to make sure that we are on the same page, I'm going to share with you a video showing an abandoned airport. Okay, so give me a second. So this is the airport that we are talking about. That is somewhere in the world, and as you can see, it's not in a great shape. And this piece of land is owned by the municipality that today is represented by Christina's team, okay? As you can see, there is a lot of work to be done. So let's stop this. Okay, and let me show you uh, something else. Let me show you the the first design of a convention center that Alexander Alexander team would like to build. Okay. So here is, do you all see the, there's an image on your screen? Okay, as, yes. as you can see, is a, is a pretty new, modern uh, uh, convention center with uh, a lot of space also for, uh, for taking a nap, like uh, these people here, all right? Okay. So let me clear this, let me stop this. Okay, so now that we know which project we're talking about, I think it will be useful if uh, uh, I, give you, I give each team the opportunity to brainstorm some ideas, ask some final questions, okay? So I'm going to create two separate rooms for each team, and then I'm going to join each team ask you if you have any final questions, hopefully you will not have any questions, and then I'll bring you all back together, and then we will decide what is going to happen next, okay? So let me create some breakout rooms, okay? With Alexander, Matt, Tom, and then with Iran, Christina, Rachel, and Vicky, okay? Well, I have a good news. It seems that uh, uh, both your teams are, are ready and we to go ahead with it. Okay? So, what I'd like to suggest is uh, that uh, the next step is going to be a meeting in London in March at the Savoy Hotel to finalize the project. Okay? Now, Christina also said that there are some uh, details 
that she would like to uh, uh, to discuss with Ale Alexander, and that certainly can yeah. be done before the meeting. All right. Okay. So let me. If it's okay with you, I'm going to write up whatever you, whatever you have agreed. Okay. So let me. Okay. Pull up a, a document, okay? And the document is going to be very easy. An agreement. An agreement regarding this convention center project. As you can see, it's a very simple agreement, but that is what you have agreed. And uh, uh, Christina, Christina and Alexander will discuss and resolve any final issues before the above meeting. Are you all okay with this? Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to, uh, to convert this document into a PDF file and I'm going to send it to you by email, okay? All right, I think we're done. And uh, thank you very much. So we'll see you all next month in London. Okay.